rendezvous with death. At some disputed barricade. It may be he shall take my hand and lead me into his dark land and close my eyes and quench my breath. I have a rendezvous with death. And I, to my pledged word, am true. I shall not fail that rendezvous. I'm Alan the Apprentice Belpo, I'm 20 years old, I'm a professional mixed martial artist of AMA Next Generation Balmain in Northern Ireland. Uh, coming off a big win on UXC and the Odyssey, the Odyssey is probably the biggest venue in Northern Ireland, so I uh, beat uh, MMA Ferrant and Steve McComb, got a fight that night as well, and I finished him in the third round. Uh, triangle. After that, I was uh, to face Lee Remedius, the UFC veteran on the case contender for the title, which would have been a big scout for me, but made a big mistake on the weight cut, which is nobody's fault but my own. I just left it too late and couldn't get the weight off in time. Uh, fortunately, the fight never happened, but that's a lesson learned, and where I came from that has just been. Amazing that after that fight I didn't know what I was going to do, I didn't know if I was going to continue in the sport or what was happening. So I took a time out, got breaks, got myself back together and from then just got myself back where, to where I want to be. I was building myself up, I was changing everything, my diets, my training and just everything, the whole lifestyle completely to prove that this is what I want to do and that I can do it professionally and show what I am made. Yeah. I even went to Liverpool, next generation, took out my comfort zone with all new bodies that I've never trained with before and I learned a lot there too which helped me with my diet and coming home to broadening their knowledge, my own knowledge, uh, coming up to just get me ready for this next fight I have against James McElhane for looking at my title. Right, I'll come off a, a really, really great one. Uh, and the Odyssey there, uh, the Odyssey Arena in Belfast, which is a top venue in the country. Um, they had a completely dumped performance over a really top veteran and the sport. And just the man that his place, kind of, and the rankings to show him like, where he belongs as one of the top fighters in the country, in the UK actually. Um, they also were good off that, whereas that it's kind of given them a, a feel of things to come. Like, you know, you fight in arenas around the country, you know, 300 people, 1,000 people, but the Odyssey Arena that night had 5,300 odd people like. So it's kind of a step between them and kind of see what's in front of them when they go to the bigger promotions and fight in front of crowds of that size. But it did not pay them one bit. They lapped up and they loved every single minute of them. So onwards and upwards from there. Yeah, I've known Alan for about about six, seven years. I remember I was just having my first pro fight in the Elton Footbridge many years ago and uh, I remember Alan was an amateur then, semi pro I think it was back then. I know it's all changed the amateur new class roles, so I remember fighting back then and I think he was about seventeen or something, sixteen, seventeen. And I knew he'd been training with Robbie Murr. Um, at that time I was training with David Patterson, so he'd usually come up and train with us up in uh, sparring in the morning times up in David Patterson's and I knew then there was potentially, you know, a lot of raw potential. I know he's a bit of a hooligan at times, but for the most part, if his head screwed on, you know, it was it was well matured and and, and, and the way of fighting, you know. So um, he had ton. I think he had about 17 amateur fights, you know. So that's a lot of experience, you know. And then he turned pro and he had his um, he was on, I think he's like 10 or 11 and five or something like that there at the minute. Um, and only a young lad at 21, 22 years of age. So. I mean, where he's where he is now, and where I was back then, he's uh, definitely you know the game's just evolved so much. There's ten times the fighter I ever was back then, so just think what's going to be like and whenever he's 26, 27, 28, when he's really at his peak and he's fully grown. So um, you know he's been there. He's had the big fights and cage warriors, cage contenders, but there was at times 
He's fought in uh, UXC, which is a really big show there in the Odyssey, headlined by Robbie Moore, Coach Rodney and Alex Reid. So he's, he's tasted the big shows and um, that's good for him at that age because there's a lot of experience there. He's built the height, the pressure, and you know that's the part that goes along with the game. A lot of guys have it in the head, but whenever, whenever the pressure comes into it, the media and stuff, it can kind of get to them. But it's good for him to taste this here when he's younger, and then whenever he progresses into the, the bigger leagues, you know, when it makes it to the UFC or the big shows in America, depending on what his goal really is, which I would say is probably the UFC. But um, the most important thing is he yeah, loads experience. You know, he's all kind of had a wee blip there when he was meant to fight the Remedios, which is for a title earlier in the year. So um, I think he missed weight there. But I mean, we all get the problems with weight. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to adapt. You know, he'll just. He'll take a wee piece, bit, bit, bits and pieces from me, nutrition wise, and they'll take a bit from Rodney. He just asks questions, you know, so, but at the end of the day, he's got to mix that into his own body type, you know, like, my, what I do will probably not work for Alan, you know. So, um, every fighter just adapts it to what suits them the best, how they feel, because no one knows their body better than themselves. And, and, and once you get that down to fine art, you're stepping into that cage, you know, you're stepping in to prepare for, you know, in the best shape, you know, everything's right, your, your head's in the right place. And uh, I feel like he's, he's got that there master now, and it's, now he's at that stage, what, he's 22, he's a young lad now, so once he moves on up the ladder, he'll, he'll just only keep getting better and progressing. Um, going back to the, the fight in UXC, he fought like a welfare, and you know, I trained with Stephen McComb for many, many years up in Interim, and I knew he was very good, over 50 professional fights, I think, and to beat him in like spectacular fashion, just picking him apart, you know, it shows that he can, he can fight the distance, you know, it shows that he can, he can finish fights in the first round as well, you know, and that's what I like to see, I like to see fighters can be smart and technical and go the whole three rounds, you know, even five rounds if need be, they're running in there and knocking them out in the first round and, and it's game over, you never really see a, a, a true fighter's potential, you know, when they're in there, it's always nice to get a first round finish, right, but everybody will always be asking the question, oh, what if he's been tested, if he's ever been on the ground, or if he's ever been, you know, in a, a real nasty ground of fight. Alan's been on all in before because I've been there before and he fought Mike Wood, who's ready just to go back to the SA, former cop contestant. He's, uh, I remember Alan on there took the fight in like a couple of weeks notice and I remember your guy was huge. That was back in 2000, November 2012. I was getting ready for the uh, Ultimate Fighter finale and he, um, the guy was huge. So he, he didn't really want to stand with Alan, so he took him down and, and you could see it wear on Alan after the first few rounds, the guy was heavy on top, so, and he stuck it all night, you know, I know he got caught by triangle in the end of the third round, but he felt what it's like away from home territory, away in the, the, the lion's den, you know, and feeling that pressure, and a lot, a lot of people can't do that, so it's good that he's got that um, huge experience, actually more experience than a lot of, a lot of pro fighters, you know, because he's got a big amateur background, and uh, he's done a lot of amateur boxing as well, so, um, it's great to see him progress, and, and, and now he's got a good big fight coming up here against Dave Bigler and to get back on, you know, not one away, but get back on track after that little uh, the hiccup he had on Cage Contender about missing weight. But you know, everyone misses weight. There's loads of fighters like you lot to see the two top fighters in the UFC. They miss weight. A couple of guys there in the last weigh-ins missed weight by so many pounds. So it's good to see him get back on track. And uh, and I mean, you know, he's he's definitely got the the, the potential and the ability there. It's, keeping the head in the right place and you know you can really achieve that really. So we've also went back to the drawing board uh, where Alan's trained as well. Uh, now he's kind of got in his head that you know what it takes, you know, the commitment and the stuff that's needed to get him to the next level. Like he's completely dedicated again, he's hungry and he really, really wants it. And uh, he's willing to make the sacrifices and that to get him up there, to get him the next arena, to the bigger arena. There's now that he's got a taste for it, he wants more of it, that type of way. Um, so again, you know, he's training in the club here, you know, it's, it's going really, really well, and he's listening to everyone that's going on now, and he's mixing things up, getting out of his comfort zone, and he's definitely going to do good at it, and do well. I did take a big break just to be more focused myself and keep myself intact because I wasn't too sure if this was what I'm to do anymore. And then when I started thinking about my granddad and what he'd done in his career and what that bond we had together was that's what sort of gave me that extra edge again because we like he was my hero, he wasn't just my granddad, he was my hero, my inspiration. 
and him being a fighter, me being a fighter in the family is something that we had and no one else had, we had that connection and then I was always a blue eye so <coughs> getting back in it after that and then now I'm just totally focused, this is the best I've ever felt, I'm getting the diet right, I'm staying clean and just, everything's just working well, like everything. I actually don't have any faults, maybe sometimes I have a bad day of training or whatever but apart from that but for me all I see is me just going higher and higher and higher and getting to the top and there's no, I can't see anybody that's going to stop me, anybody put in front of me I'll find a way to beat them, Even whether it's a hard fight, easy fight, I'll just, I'll do it. So now that everyone's back on track, so yeah, let's focus again, his nutrition's on track, his training's on track, uh, there's a whole new improved, a new Alan Falpock coming on, on show here and the unfortunate victim for that is going to be little James McGrillian and uh, a few weeks time here in the Kuma Championship is a title fight, uh, which no doubt Alan's going to bring home. Here at Kuma, fight show with Alan Philpott. A few questions for him here, so uh, how are you feeling? Yeah. I need this, it's great to be back. Me and uh, made a mistake the last time I was meant to fight, and it sort of knocked me off track. I missed some weight, and sort of had to prove myself. And it's good to get the chance on him and be fighting for our title against James McGrillian. It's just, if everyone's went perfect in this come I feel great. I took myself overseas, the next generation Liverpool, and uh, totally out of my comfort zone, got my mind focused that I came by, my coaches, Rodney, uh, club, all my club partners and everything, they were just on me and giving me as much support as I needed, and this really is the best camp I ever got, and from making weight I actually smashed it, and I didn't struggle once, not once, through the whole camp or weight cut, I felt like I was going to break. So coming back, it's just going to be good again and get doing what I love to do. He's a record of 11 wins with 6 defeats. He fights out of Iron A Next Generation. Let's hear for Alan. Well, a couple dream is that you have. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible, that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. That in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain. 
There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself and say, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. Their rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. Greatness is not this wonderful, esoteric, elusive, godlike feature that only the special among us uh, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one. Most people, they raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching, they stop pushing themselves. That a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation. And most people don't work on their dreams. Why? One is because of fear. The fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? These are not risk takers. You spend so much time with other people. You spend so much time trying to get people to like you. You know other people more than you know yourself. You studied them. You know about them. You want to hang out like them. You want to be just like them. And you know what? You've invested so much time in them. You don't know who you are. I challenge you to spend time by yourself. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. When you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you're following other people, as long as you're being a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world. But you will be the best you could be. I'm telling you to, to define your value. That everybody won't see it. That everybody won't join you. That everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that. That you are an uncommon breed. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry. People who are unstoppable and unreasonable. People who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. The people that are living their dream of finding winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dreams of a people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. If you want to be more successful, if you want to have and do stuff you ain't never done before, number two, I'm asking you to invest in you. To invest in you. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. That you don't have to go through life being a victim. And even though you face disappointments, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it, period. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I want to represent an idea. I want to represent possibilities. And some of you right now, you want to be, you know what I'm saying, you want to go to the next level. I want to counsel, you know, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor, listen to me. You can't get to that level. You can't get to the level economically where you want to be until you start investing in your mind. You're not reading books. I'm challenging y'all to go to conferences. I dare you to invest time. I dare you to be alone. I dare you to spend an hour getting to know yourself. When you become who you are, when you become the person that you were created to be, designed to be who you were designed to be, when you become an individual, what you do is you take yourself and you start separating yourself from other people. I tell you to get to a place where people don't like you, it don't even bother you no more. Why? Because you're not concerned with trying to make them happy because you're trying to blow up. You're trying to get to the next level. I need you to invest in your mind. Invest in your mind. If you still talk about your dream, if you still talk about your goal, but you have not done anything, just take the first step. That you can make your parents proud, you can make your school proud, you can touch millions of people's lives, and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. Don't let nobody steal your dream. After we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up, or something
somebody say, you can count on me, and they don't come through. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cards repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and saying to yourself, it's not over until I win. You can live your dream! It's not only everybody's there to support at home, it's like any of the rest of the guys is fighting. Alan's behind them 100%. You know, he, like say, I have a fight coming up. He, he's, he's been sending me messages, he's offering to, you know, I work shifts, he's offering to help me train out of shift because I can't get to training. You know, he's always been helpful, he's always been interested in everybody else. It's, you know, he, he puts the work on with everybody and it's not all about himself. It's one of the best things about it all. And, like, everybody appreciates him in the gym. If he wasn't here, the gym wouldn't be the same. You know, he's. The work he puts on with the guys, the support he gives you, the confidence he gives you, it's second to none, you know, and just, he's a great fella to have about the gym. Can we go in there? Can we go in there? I'm scaring the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Come on. Uh, it's nice to get away from the gym and all the fighting atmosphere sometimes, just to get your mind focused and take it away and just give you that extra edge in life and not just always thinking and overdoing it. So taking the dog Roscoe and my wee pup Kobe and take him down a nice river walk down in my local area. And we just sit, we throw sticks, we chill, and it's just it's just nice and relaxing. It's not all about fighting and aggressiveness and always being on the go. It's it's, it's as much to stay calm as it is anything else. They keep pictures and fight cards and certificates and posters and anything to do with my career because it's not going to be a long career. It's, you're only in the MMA for a short time, I agree. Like, and it's always good to have that just to refresh your mind and always just refresh yourself where you've came from and who the likes that you've been on the same cards with. Like, there's guys who've been on the same fight cards who's hit the top legs. There's guys that's being in the big leagues and you've got a chance to fight on the same car as them after they came by at the big leagues so it's always good, it's always nice to have it and uh, especially in the local papers as well, my mother and my grandma, she, uh, they always cut out and always make sure that anything I'm in, whether it's to do my career or if it's just anything in general, they'll always cut it out it's just so I can put it in the scrapbook along with everything else and then one day I'll be able to tell a story and it'll all be there. Uh, fighting's been in my blood the whole way through. Like my grandfather, he was a professional boxer, and growing up, I was his boy, as his blue eyes, and I couldn't do no wrong. And just to have that link in our family, that nobody else would have had because I was a fighter, he was a fighter, and we just had that air, and it just was brilliant. And he, was, he always showed me the right way of doing things. Like he wouldn't have 
let, like if I let things get in my head a wee bit whenever I was getting a few a wee streak going and people were starting to boast about me, he would always remind me where I came from and how to go about the sport right. I know sometimes I let the tongue go a little bit and talk a bit, but without my, grand, my grandfather, he did guide me the right way, and it's just nice to have that. The have hand show me the ropes, and he's from Belfast. And whenever I box when I was younger, when I was boxing up around Belfast, all the boxing coaches knew him. No respect him, the old boxing club. They knew him. They all respect him, and it's just nice. My wee sister, she's disabled. She's got April syndrome, and that's another fighter. That's a different type of fight, and that's a fighting that I can't even say I'm close to because she's in a league of her own. She's been through so much, and she's only five years old. And just the it just proves that our family can fight, and no matter what we're given or shown, we'll do it. My mother's been through a hard time. My big sister as well. Like, so we're all there. We're all fighters. My father had a fighting career, a different one, and he was in it for as long as he could, and it just proves, and everybody that knows us knows that we're no easy touch, but we don't go around throwing our weight or trying to be everybody, we're as respectable as anybody, and we just like to have a normal, happy life, but it's just unfortunately fighting's in our blood and we're tough skin.